If the history reminds that the researchers of the Reich made the first jet-powered plane, Soviet scientists also have a great contribution to the development of this kind of engine, more precisely in the RAM jets. The point of creating the very first plane using a such propulsion. However, as such advanced technology has taken its first step on an aircraft that only inspires obsolescence. The merger of this polar opposite is the I-15B's DM-2. Thanks to the theories elaborated by Sergei Barisevich Stechkin, the Soviet Union created in 1931 the GIRD. On April 15th of 1933 was realized their first test of a ramjet engine. A ramjet is simply a tube devoid of mobile parts in which the air is mixed with the fuel in combustion and then ejected. In July of the same year, engines working with a white phosphorus fuel and then ethylene have been tested successfully proving that it was possible to make it work with hydrocarbon fuel opening so the door for in-flight experimentations. Experimentations that will be carried out in a very particular way. By shooting this with a 76mm cannon. Indeed. The main goal of these researchers was to study about the possibility of using this at supersonic speed. Plus, a ramjet cannot walk at zero speed. In February 1934, 10 prototypes with the shape of a 76mm caliber were fired. The result was that the range increased by 1 km, showing that the engine could walk at supersonic speed. Nevertheless, the data collected showed that the thrust generating was of only 18 kg for an air resistance of 20 kg. The engine was therefore not yet capable of generating a positive acceleration. A second and then a third series of tests were lead in 1935, whose results were less encouraging. If the thrust generating reached 26 kg, it compensated only 60% of its own air resistance, which did not allow it to be used as an airplane thruster. It is then that Igor Merkula distinguished himself by solving this problem. He determined that the ramjet worked according to the Brighton cycle, which means that if the power is increased, the temperature will also be increased, and so the size of the engine which creates even more air resistance. He then had the idea of thinking in the opposite way by reducing the power to reduce friction with the air. On the basis of his work, a new prototype of ramjet intended to have a significantly higher thrust has been built in 1936. This one will be tested in a rocket with a powder charge which will propel the rocket in order to reach the required speed for the ignition of the reactor. Following this model, another rocket has been built, but now it had two lifts. The first one consisted of a powdered propulsion and the second of the ramjet powered one. Unlike the previous times, the results were extremely promising, which caught the attention of many scientists. On the strength of the support they have given, the researchers on this technology accelerated through numerous rocket launchers, which proved that ramjets could walk at subsonic speed. On July 3rd of 1939, the NKP decided to start the study about the using of this engine for airplanes. This led to the creation in July of the DM-1 engine, which has been tested in September. In the same month, the DM-2 model has been considered to be then fixed on the plane. This was a relatively small device, 
Its dimensions were a length of 1.5 meters or a diameter of 40 centimeters, and it was only 12 kilograms heavy. But before putting it on the plane, it had to pass by the step of the wind tunnel. As it was a singular technology, it required the construction of a special tunnel, the 81. After excellent results, it was time to finally test the ramjet on the plane. Two DMTs were fixed on the Polycarpov I-15Bs in order to make of it a flying laboratory. Its tail and elevators were sheeted by a coating of dual aluminium to give a protection against the heat generated by the engine. In December 1939, the pilot Pyotr Loginov took the commands of this special I-50 piece and achieved its first flight. But it cannot be considered as the first flight of a ramjet powered plane since during the five first flights. The two auxiliary engines were not in function in order to determine if the modifications affected the stability of the plane. It is only on January 25th of 1940 that the flight of a ramjet powered plane was accomplished for the first time in the history. The jet powered biplane realized several turns over Moscow with its DMTs at maximum power, whose the flames were even longer than the plane itself, what had frightened the population so much that five fire brigades rushed in the airport where it landed. It realized 54 flights until summer 1940. If this was a quite impressive experience, it is not the case for the results because the DM2 engines added only 22 km per hour to the maximum speed at the price of a significant increase of the fuel consumption. But this was only the first step because in August, the ingenious concept, the DM4 model that will on August 3rd of 1940 propel a I-153, which will this time gain 51 km per hour on its maximum speed during its 20 flights. How bad? When Germany launched its invasion of the USSR, the scientific research had to be focused on the development of vital projects for the effort of war. If the researches on ramjet slowed, it was not totally interrupted since in 1942, an LIGG-3 received these engines for testing. Then, in 1944, the DM-4 were tested on a Yak-7B, and in 1948, the 126 PVRD on the Lavochkin LA-9 proving that the potential and the future of this technology, which will later equip the fastest planes, but also missiles for the most advanced scientific research, by beating speed records on speed records since it proven to be the most efficient, but also the simplest category of engine with the beginning in the aviation, was marked by a biplane. SARS if the Soviet biplanes are a synonym of technological backwardness, they were also the starting point of one of the greatest masterclass of the Soviet technology. Indeed, the researchers on this technology gave a real stress to the domain of the jet engine. Plus, this work boosted its contributors. Among them, Sergei Karalyov, whose career took off and will later make the Soviet space program take off!